So, how many belt ranks are in karate? This is a very, very common question people search for, especially those who have not trained in the martial arts or they're looking to get into one or, or maybe they're currently one martial art but they see another school do something different and they're like, well, why isn't my belt rank like that? So this seems to be a very common point of curiosity among the martial arts community. Now, in my personal opinion, belt ranks are both a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing about them is they're a great motivator. It's something to work towards too. When a person takes an art, it's always good to see an achievement. Even though that particular belt doesn't represent you know, the hard work, it shouldn't be the focus of your training. It is still a good motivator and psychological tool. Additionally, it helps instructors kind of keep track where students are in class. However, belt ranks are also a little bit of a curse because unfortunately, there's a lot of people who join martial arts just to chase the rank rather than worry about the quality of the training. So basically, you know, there's pros and cons to it. So as long as you keep in mind that the belt is really nothing more than just a piece of fabric to keep your uniform closed, this is just gonna be a fun little exercise just to see how different systems do this differently. So we're gonna take a look at how many belts there are in karate. Not every martial art uses a belt ranking system. In fact, the concept of colored belts as rank is a relatively new one in the history of martial arts, but we'll get back to that. Many arts don't have a colored ranking system at all, but sometimes, especially in commercial American and European schools, they will adopt similar ranks, such as colored sashes, shirts, and sometimes chevrons. Colored belt ranks are more commonly found with arts that have Okinawan, Japanese, and Korean roots. But before we get into the different styles, let's point out two primary classifications of belt ranks, the Q and Dan ranks. Q ranks are all levels before black belt and they count backwards as you progress through the system. Dan ranks begin with first degree black belt and count up as the student progresses. Some arts and schools will count white belt as a Q rank. Others consider white as an unranked beginning level. The red belt is an interesting rank in and of itself and it often means different things in different systems. In some arts, it marks the beginning or novice student, while in others, it's simply another color level throughout different curriculums. However, sometimes red is the color of mastery and it might even hold a high regard, even higher than that of black belt. So where did the tradition of using colored belt ranks begin? There is a commonly told origin story in which back in older and more traditional days, karate practitioners simply wore white belts and never washed them. It was said that as they trained, these belts would get dirtier and over time sweat dirt, grass, and blood would discolor the belt into darker and darker levels. This would hold that the darker a practitioner's belt was, the more experienced that they were. This was very commonly noted as the origin of the belt system. However, it exists as a legend and is most likely untrue. The historically recorded origin of the belt ranking system can be traced back to Judo and its founder, Jigoro Kano. He is also credited for instituting the traditional karate gi as we have today. Prior to his influence, most students trained in traditional clothing or kimonos. Kano founded judo in 1882, and in 1883, he awards two students with a black belt. He felt that these students had reached a level of expertise, and he wanted to recognize their skill, so he turned to the sport of swimming, which was very popular in Japan. Swimmers who excelled in their skill were awarded black ribbons, so Kano decided to carry this tradition over to judo. At this time, the ranks were simply black and non-black. Judo had six Q rankings, and Kano later decided to add other belts to mark the progression. His original colored rankings were light blue, two white belt levels, and three brown belt levels before reaching black. Later, as Judo spread and more practitioners carried the art around the world, these ranks were separated into more distinct colors of white, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, and then black. Sometimes blue and purple swapped places. It is also said that Kano took his inspiration for the Q-Dan designations from a popular 2,500-year-old Chinese board game called Go, in which players are ranked by skill level with beginning Q ranks and expert Dan ranks. And thus, the colored belt system was born and was soon adopted by various martial arts systems. Now, before we take a look at some examples, it's important to understand that there isn't always a standard ranking list, even within the same art. Many arts are divided into organizations that will modify their own independent curriculums and therefore employing different color schemes. This can vary from school to school, but we're gonna take a few minutes to see how some arts utilize this ranking system. Many traditional Japanese and Okinawan karate systems will use the same colors, but the order of those colors will be wildly different from each other. Shotokan, founded by Gichin Funakoshi, is often white, yellow, orange, blue, green, two purples, and three levels of brown. 
Now, not every Shotokan school follows this, and there is some degree of variation, but this is one of the common Q sets. Don ranks are often recognized as 1 through 10, however, Funakoshi himself never personally awarded anyone higher than 5th Don. Shitoryu commonly has 9 Q ranks and 10 Don ranks. This is an art that often excludes White Belt as a Q and considers it no rank, with the ranks proceeding as White with a Yellow Stripe, Yellow, Orange, Purple, Blue, Green, 3 Brown Belts, and then 10 Don ranks. Now while Shito Ryu colors can change from school to school, we see far more variation in Wado Ryu and Goju Ryu. Wado Ryu usually has 10 Q ranks and 8 Dons, but there are many different color schemes employed by different schools. Goju Ryu is an art that is governed by many different organizations, and each affiliation uses their own schemes as well, typically with 10 Q and 10 Don ranks. Kyokushin, a powerful full contact karate system, is a bit more standardized, with most curriculums falling under white, orange, orange with stripe, blue, blue with stripe, yellow, yellow with stripe, green, green with stripe, brown, brown with stripe, and then down levels of black belt. Sometimes red will take the place of orange. Now, my art of American Kenpo is one of those arts that has divided into a thousand different directions and is splintered among many different organizations, each as different as the next. Kenpo may perhaps be one of the most politically divided arts. However, ironically, it seems to have one of the more standard colored ranking systems. Most Kempo schools, even those with completely different curriculums, will follow this belt color system. White, yellow, orange, purple, blue, green, three browns, and 10 degrees of black belt. Now, even though sometimes you'll see the three levels of brown belt separated into red and red black, Kempo is a system that traditionally treats red as a color of mastery, and that is evidence in the black belt ranks. Each degree of black belt receives a half inch red stripe, half an inch apart, to show that we slowly master our art in increments. When a student reaches 5th degree, the belt receives a 5 inch red block, and then stripes are added until reaching 10th degree, marked by two solid blocks. Originally, however, the founder of American Kempo, Ed Parker, used the white, brown, and black color scheme that Kano used in the beginning, only adding more colored ranks later as the curriculum grew and advanced. Now, when it comes to jujitsu, we are definitely talking about a classification of martial art that is divided into many, many different systems, and we could spend all day covering each and every one of them. Like many karate styles, jujitsu will use standard colored belts in different orders. However, you'll often see red belt here marking a beginning or early rank. In the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation, ranks are typically red, white, yellow, orange, green, blue with a white center stripe, blue, purple, brown with a white center stripe, brown, black with a white center stripe, and then black. In the art of jujitsu that I am currently training in, Sanyama Bushiru, the belt orders are white, orange, yellow, green, three browns, and then 10 levels of black. This brings us to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, one of the more popular and widespread arts today. When it comes to belt ranking, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu holds one of the stricter standards of belt rankings across different schools. Each belt takes a significant amount of time and practice to achieve, and practitioners take each rank and the respect that comes with it very, very seriously. In most BJJ schools, you will find ranks set as white, blue, purple, brown, and then black belt. This is pretty standard and interchangeable between schools. However, once in a while, you'll come across a school that might add a green belt rank, usually as a novice or a youth rank. There are 10 down levels, and the belts are marked distinctively with belts that are black, and then they go into coral patterns, and ultimately to red belt, which signifies a grandmaster title of ninth or 10th down. The red belt is a highly respected rank, and it takes a lifetime to achieve, and it is held by few. As I mentioned earlier, not every art utilizes colored belts for ranks. Aikido is typically one of those arts. While some schools may support colored belts, many only allow students to wear white or black belts. In many Aikido schools, Don students will wear a hakama when they have achieved that level. Swinging now over to the Korean arts, we see much more variation again. Hapkido may have different versions of their colored ranks, but generally you can expect to see white, yellow, green, blue, red, and 10 Don levels, or at least some close variation of this. Hapkido is also one of the arts that reserves the rank of 10th Don for their Grandmaster. Taekwondo is split into a couple of different organizations, but you will also see very different color gradings from school to school, with 9 Don ranks available for living students. The standard belt ranking for the International Taekwondo Federation is white, white with yellow tip, yellow, yellow with green tip, green, green with blue tip, blue, blue with red tip, red, red with black tip, and then black belt. 
Tang Soo Do is similarly split between different organizations, and like most of the other arts, you'll find a myriad of different color schemes. Huang Ki, the founder of Mudu Kwan, originally established white, green, and red as the colored belt ranks before going into the down levels. However, what is really interesting about Mudu Kwan is a custom that is followed by select schools. Traditionally, down ranks are not represented by black belts, but rather belts that sport a midnight blue color. This falls into the philosophy of black representing perfection, and no one can be perfect. It is commonly said that Ki believe that black is a color to which nothing else can be added, so the Don holder wears midnight blue to show that he is always learning. And finally, we're going to take a look at Ninjutsu, or specifically Bujinkan Ninjutsu, that is an international organization that incorporates various Ninjutsu lineages. They have a little bit of a different approach to the colored belt rankings. In Bujinkan, there are nine cues, but they don't traditionally follow the same belt color ranking. Beginning students are unranked and they wear a white belt. Upon achieving their ninth cue, they will then wear a green belt if they are male, or a red belt if they are female. These students will wear these same belts from ninth to first cue, and when they achieve their first don, they will wear a black belt. Sometimes, schools will use stars or other insignias to denote which rank they are at. Additionally, there are 10 don ranks, but 10th don has five sub-level ranks to it. These additional five ranks are certifications that signify a master has learned everything there is to learn about that particular lineage. Very few achieve these ranks and they're typically more discreet. So that was just a fun look to see how Bujinkan offers a bit of a unique spin on the colored belt ranking system. In any case, belt color is just a measuring system and a syllabus guide and in no way actually determines your skill in any art. The belt should not be the goal, but rather you should focus on the skills that the system teaches you. So there we go. That's just a brief look at all the different belt ranks in the different karate and martial arts systems. In the end, it really doesn't matter what color you are. It's just a piece of fabric. It doesn't represent your actual skill or the hard work you put into it. It's just a milestone. It's a tool of measurement. Whether you use it for a psychological encouragement or you're one of those people who want to just chase belt levels. So in the end, all that's really important is the quality of training you're getting, regardless of whatever belt rank you are. Here's to keeping your pants up. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I like to hear feedback from our viewers. I'm actually curious, for those of you who train in maybe some Kung Fu systems or other systems that don't have belts, what do you, how do you guys rank? Do you have rank? Just kind of what are some of the ways you differentiate your different levels? I would love to hear from you. Please subscribe and share. Thank you so much for watching.